Hello, this is a short video about a cool uh, GitHub project called Homer, which is uh, useful for people that deal with uh, voice over IP and uh, troubleshooting of uh, those kinds of systems. So uh, let's uh, run down what Homer is, uh, what it can do for you, what it looks like, and uh, well, maybe you'll find this useful or maybe not. So um, uh, Homer is a, a web interface that uh, gives you the capability to uh, view uh, SIP captures. So if you deal with uh, voice over IP troubleshooting, um, then you can quickly look up calls and, and see the SIP flow, see what's wrong with them, uh, etc. And um, I'm on the, uh, the GitHub page here, and uh, you can see here on the sidebar that uh, Homer is compatible with a lot of systems. Uh, the way they capture is by encapsulating the SIP packets in a new protocol they call uh, HEP. Um, not sure what that stands for actually, but uh, I'm sure you can look it up. And it is uh, compatible with things like Asterisk, which is a really popular open source uh, uh, phone system or PBX. But it's also uh, compatible with uh, uh, some more enterprisey things like uh, Oracle SPCs or Avaya stuff. Uh, which I'm not really familiar with. And there's also, of course, uh, Camilio and OpenSIPs. And um, you can even use a system that isn't compatible by uh, implementing a capped agent. But that's uh, enough talking for now. Let's look at Homer itself. Okay, so I've pulled up uh, Homer here and uh, I have a, a sample call, which uh, you can just look up with the sidebar here. You have uh, different uh, search capabilities. For example, you can search by from user, which is the phone number that the caller used. And then the to number, which is the phone number the, of the callee. We can also search by a SIP method if we're looking for a specific invite or by message. You can also uh, search by call ID, which is uh, uh, what I use in my uh, work as a knock engineer for a ITSP. So let's actually take a look at this session here. Uh, we can just click the session ID or call ID and we will get a nice uh, diagram of the uh, call that has taken place here. And uh, we can see that this looks fairly normal. My phone sends an invite and then my PBX asks to authenticate. So we send a new invite with authentication details. What you can conclude from this SIP flow is that the system here, so the system here called Hermes, which is my PBX, uh, immediately picked up after uh, receiving the uh, receiving the invite. You can see that from the times here, there's, there's a time difference noted. But we can also conclude that from not receiving a 180 packet back or 183, which would be normal if you would be calling a person. A 180 or 183 is to indicate to the phone that the other side is ringing. Uh, then we get an ACK and a BY. Okay, so this is great. This is great stuff. We can quickly look up a call and, and view the, the SIP flow. Uh, but we can also just click one of these, for example, the 200k packet here. And then we can actually see the uh, value of that packet, which can be really useful. Uh, we can, for example, see the Kodak information here. Um, and we can see the from string. Um, and there's all kinds of very interesting information here. But there's more. Um, if we close this and then go to session info, um, we get some info that uh, Homer has concluded from the packets that it has received. For example, there's this that this call took 11 seconds, that there was a 401, which might indicate an error, but is, is normal in this case. And that this call is finished. Um, if you're in a big environment, then it may happen uh, that you're looking at a call which is still ongoing. And Homer can actually indicate that. We can also look at uh, the quality of service. For example, we can look at the mean opinion score or MOS value. But we can also look at, for example, uh, jitter or uh, loss statistics. Um, then finally, if you want to dive, d dive deeper, deeper or you want to send this to someone, uh, you have a couple of options. You can uh, save a PNG, which looks like this. And this is basically just an export of the uh, flow we, j we saw earlier. Uh, we can also export this as text, which, well, 
looks like this. And this is just the uh, uh, zip trace. Uh, uh, most uh, tools or most people would call call this. It's just the zip packets uh, sequentially in a in a text file. And we can also just export a pcap, which is great if you want to uh, take a look at this, uh, take a further look at this in things like Wireshark. Um, we can uh, use the uh, telephony uh, tools here in Wireshark. For example, the flow sequence here. Uh, this is familiar stuff for people that look at uh, VoIP calls in Wireshark, but it's great to just be able to quickly search for a call and then export that PCAP. I also have an example of a call that uh, didn't go as well, and I will show you that now. So here's a example of a call that was a little bit problematic. And uh, I'm guessing you can see what uh, what happened here. Uh, there's a lot of 200k packages, but not an ACK going back to the PBX. And this is because, well, I just disconnected the phone. So the phone uh, wouldn't send any messages back. You cannot expect an answer from something that's dead. So yeah true words but uh, this uh, proves that homer is a really useful tool for quickly looking up voice over ip calls and doing troubleshooting on them um, homer has some other uh, features uh, for example it has a uh, nice api here um, which i'm not going into it's out of the scope for this video but uh, i uh, encourage you to take a look uh, if you want to take a look without ho downloading Homer, there is a open API specification in the uh, Git repo. Uh, you can also create uh, aliases for um, um, SIP endpoints that uh, that you want to uh, assign names to, and a guy called another guy called Nick from uh, Australia that also does telco things. Uh, made a nice blog post on this API and how you can use it to uh, dynamically add uh, more aliases. So uh, that, that, that might be really useful. For example, if you use uh, Netbox uh, to uh, keep an inventory of all your IP addresses and, uh, and systems, uh, then uh, I could uh, see someone doing an integration between Homer and Netbox to sync uh, uh, VoIP endpoints. Uh, but you can also just use it to uh, enter the IP addresses of your ITSP. Uh, it's really up to you. Um, you can create users, but you can also just connect this to LDAP or uh, OpenID. And um, yeah, that, that's basically a really quick overview of, of Homer itself. Um, Homer also comes with uh, well, it comes with multiple flavors, and one of these flavors is uh, with Gravana and Prometheus to uh, well store that that zip data. And uh, the upside of, of Gravana uh, being included there is uh, pretty graphs, of course. And uh, here we have some uh, host uh, statistics, uh, which is of the host that, uh, that Homer is running on. But we can also view some SIP KPIs. Um, for example, the um, uh, ASR, which is the answer CSU ratio, or the NER, which is the network effectiveness ratio. And you can read all about them by hovering over here or pausing the video at uh, strategic points, of course. Um, we have some SIP error rates with this being my personal setup. Uh, there aren't really many errors, of course, because there are not really a lot of calls going through here. Um, but yeah, Homer is a uh, very, very useful tool. Um, last thing I want to show you is how easy this is to configure on an asterisk system. So I'm logged in as a root on my uh, asterisk box here, uh, as a root as you do. So let's go to the uh, asterisk uh, configuration directory. And then... Um, if you install uh, Asterisk from scratch, you will probably get this hep or hep.conf file. And uh, it's j really just a quick edit away. You just uh, vim this, then uh, type in the address of where the Applify server is running. Um, by default, this will come with, a, with an example of 9061, but you want to actually send traffic to port 9060. 
which is the UDP uh, port. And uh, Asterisk will by default send this HTTP traffic over UDP. Uh, I didn't configure a capture password, uh, capture ID I left default, but if you have multiple systems, then please give every system a unique capture ID, which makes uh, filtering uh, a little bit easier. Um, but this is just it. Uh, make sure that uh, these modules are loaded, either by adding them to your modules.conf um, or loading them manually. Um, but if you've done that, then you're all set. I just will just start sending traffic to, to Homer and you will see this traffic uh, back in the, in the Homer web interface. Yeah, so that's that's really it. I wanted to uh, keep this video uh, short and simple. Uh, if this is interesting to you or sounds like something you might benefit from, uh, then uh, I'd highly recommend you guys to take a look at Homer. But that's been it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have been, hit like, subscribe and all the good stuff. And I'll see you next time.